Hello everybody. So this is my uh, my big haul of records, um, all the 12 inch LPs from the uh, Big Friends of the Library sale I went to. Grabbed a whole bunch, uh, probably more than I needed, but uh, the price was right and it's all for charity. It's all to help the libraries uh, kind of get some newer stuff, I guess, from the, the books and video collection they have there. And so I went in big. Uh, here's my cat, Ollie. Hello, Ollie. Oh boy, he's going to be a pain. So I'll try to go through these pretty quick. Uh, some Chet Atkins, Caribbean guitar, one I didn't have already. Cool cover. And another Chet, uh, the other Chet Atkins, that's the title. This is uh, Chet doing some romantic guitar, apparently. And uh, instrumental classic, The Ventures. I guess self-titled. I actually already had a copy of this. Uh, another mono pressing, pretty much the same shape, but it's a good record. Uh, this one's cool. This is Jimmy Reed. Um, Early electric blues here on VJ. Jimmy Reed. It says Jimmy Reed at Carnegie Hall, but actually there's two records. One of him at Carnegie Hall, and the other's like a best of Jimmy Reed. Although it doesn't really say that. Yeah, it says on the inside. Jimmy Reed at Carnegie Hall and the best of Jimmy Reed. Uh, early electric blues. Uh, I guess he was an influence on the Rolling Stones. I actually already have a copy of that um, that's in slightly worse shape, so that's a cool pickup. Uh, some Benny Goodman. I wouldn't normally pick up Benny Goodman, but it was uh, it was cheap, um, and these are in really nice shape. These are early early Columbia uh, 33 RPM pressings here. So it's kind of I guess a collection. Of Benny Goodman is orchestra. And then there's a two record set here, the 1937-38 jazz concert. But it's got like uh, Lionel Hampton, Teddy Wilson, Gene Krupa. So that's cool. Uh, see if I can... All right, goodbye, Ollie. He was getting too curious about my stuff. Oh god, these things are tight in the sleeve. But yeah, you can see the old Columbia Masterworks label. Uh, early, early pressing. Really nice shape. Uh, number two in the set. This one is the famous 38. 1938 Carnegie, Carnegie Hall Jazz Concert. Uh, both records of the set. Count Basie, Teddy Wilson, Gene Krupa, you can see Lionel Hampton. Uh, again, a nice shape. There's, uh, that's volume two. This is volume one. And some George Shearing. Uh, just picking up some George Shearing to kind of give him a give him a lesson, see what he's all about. The George Shearing Quintet on uh, MGM. Really nice shape. George Shearing Quintet on another one on MGM. Some Gene Krupa on Metro, which is I guess uh, it's like Verve's budget label, kind of. Continental Jazz. Uh, this one just looked kind of cool. I didn't know anything about it. I guess the band is Les Cinq Modern. But it's on the Somerset label, which I don't really know a whole lot about. Uh, it looks like it's a budget label, kind of, but it's got... It's got Al Hendrickson on guitar. I've heard him before. He's pretty good. And Paul Horn on uh, sax, flute, clarinet. I've heard him before, he's great. I'll give that a shot. Uh, this looked fun. Music for a Private Eye. I don't really know who Ralph Martyri and his Mar Marlboro men are. On Mercury Wing. Still in the shrink wrap. The Left, left Bank Bearcats. Uh, it's, I guess kind of a French Dixieland jazz band. Cool cover, nice cover artwork. Again on uh, Somerset. Don't really know anything about that label. And uh, an early Electra. Electra pressing. This is uh, 
Oscar Brands, the Wild Blue Yonder. He's doing uh, kind of the uh, Air Force songs the guys would sing in the barracks or whatever. So they have some body lyrics. Uh, it's kind of a neat, the songs of our fighting Air Force. So it's probably had some appeal among the guys who'd served in the, the military in World War I or Korea or whatever. This comes with a little booklet. This has the uh, has the lyrics to the songs. Some little illustrations of different aircraft, I guess. So that was pretty cool. And some Disney stuff. Uh, I try to pick up Disney stuff if it's cheap and it's in decent shape for my wife. She's got a really big Disney Records collection. She kind of went crazy for a year or two buying stuff on eBay. Buying a lot of really nice quality stuff. Um, the stuff I find in thrift stores isn't always in, in really good shape. This one was in the original shrink it looks like. 49 cents. This is a uh, official Mickey Mouse Club 7 inch here. And uh, Goofy's Dance Party. And this one uh, kind of beat up, um, but the cover looks in, in really good shape for the most part. So it might be something I'll frame and just hang on the wall. Zorro! The Four Adventures of Zorro. This one's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, I think it's a storyteller. It's got a little booklet inside. I always pick these up, but they're in pretty good shape. And uh, this is a twofer, Disneyland double feature. So you got uh, Pecos Bill and the Littlest Outlaw. And the gatefold there, some info on the two different movies. And I think, I think it's a slightly different label on these, I'm not sure. Uh, different color, I think, than the usual. There were a variety of different colors of that Disneyland label there. And then later they had like the yellow label with kind of a rainbow thing going on. Mary Martin's The Sound of Music. Um, I always look for the, the Disneyland stuff that's uh, the really odd titles. Those are the harder ones to find. Yeah, stuff that's not like a Disney movie. Of course, Sound of Music wasn't a Disney movie. And neither, neither was Brigadoon. But uh, this guy, Camerata... Tutti Camerata conducted a bunch of stuff for Disney back in the day. Um, so, of course, they were cashing in on what was hot movie wise in the day. Some back to jazz, the Art Van Dam Quintet on Columbia. Um, another one. Found a bunch of these. They're still in the original. Get out. Let's see. Still in the original plastic inner sleeve, which actually keeps the records in, in really nice shape, but they're, they're just a real pain in the ass to try to get back in the sleeve, so I'll probably ditch these and put them in some Blake inner sleeves there. Message from Hambro, the Lenny Hambro Quintet. I've heard the name before, I can't remember what the deal is with this guy, but I mean, it's nice. Uh, it's not really duct tape. I don't know what kind of tape that is. Of course, this is going to be like a 6 eye. Oh, no, it's not. Not a 6 eye. What? Well, that's kind of a surprise. I guess that's a white label promo. Hmm. Cool. Tony Bennett with uh, Chuck Wayne, the guitarist. Cloud 7. Pretty cool cover. I like that. Here I'll get Tony Bennett the try for just like a dollar or less. Some Mancini uh, Living Stereo Pressing. Although it doesn't have the classic Living Stereo banner there. Peter Gunn. I think I already have a copy of this but it's not in stereo. I figure I'll pick up a stereo copy. Uh, this one with the Living Stereo banner. Um, still in the original shrink. Mr. Lucky. And actually, this one, 
Yeah, this one's still sealed. Still sealed. The original shrink. And someone, wherever all these records for, someone, they, they cut open the very edge of the shrink wrap and make a note of where they bought it, apparently. So, something. Pay $1.97 at the Woolco in Gainesville. Yeah, weird. Lionel Hampton, the Apollo Hall concert, 1954. On Epic. Again, it's got that early. It must all come from one person's collection, I'm guessing. Kept them all in those original plastic inners. Some more Lionel, the genius of Lionel Hampton. Hang on a second, my cats are fighting. Ah, cats. All right, I got the cats broken up. Let's continue here. The genius of Lionel Hampton on Verve. Uh, Tyree Glenn. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Name doesn't ring a bell, but it's on uh, Roulette. Roulette, I took a chance on it. Yeah, taped up in pretty rough shape, but it's a DJ copy. I don't know what shape the vinyl's in. Looks pretty good in roulette. Basie, uh, some people call us the Atomic Basie. It's the Mushroom Cloud. Another roulette. Uh, this one's got arrangements by Neil Hefty. I guess uh, this record, I think, was pretty successful when it came out. He did at least one more with Neil Hefty doing the arrangements. Uh, some Julie London, my first Julie London. Uh, I'd always seen her records and never even thought twice about picking them up. Never been big into jazz singers, especially women. Uh, but I'm starting to open up and listen to more of that. But I just noticed the other day that I uh, guess he's playing on it. Barney Kessel, a great guitar player. And I think it's just on this one, just her with Barney and Ray Leatherwood there on bass. Real uh, stripped back instrumentation, so definitely check that one out. And uh, another copy of it, uh, this one on a, a later pressing on Liberty, just in case the vinyl on that one was beat up. And uh, this one just in the inner sleeve, not the original jacket, we have uh, Dave Brubeck, Jazz Impressions of the USA, but strangely enough when you flip it over, on the back side the label says, Songs of Christmas by the Norman Luboff Choir. Popped it on the uh, turntable. It's actually uh, it's Brubeck. So odd little uh, mislabeling job there. Some early prestige. Uh, this is Mose Allison, piano player and singer. Backcountry suite. Pretty rough shape. The uh, the jacket um, splitting and kind of stained, and the record itself is. Uh, well, I won't pull it out, but it's missing a it's got a chip out of it around the outside edge. Um it was fifty cents. Uh I'll clean it up and give it a listen. I've actually discovered these all early prestige with like the yellow and black fireworks labels and the early, early blue notes. When they're a little bit scuffed up, if you clean them up, they still uh sound pretty good. The dynamics are so good on those. All right, I have to take a break. The cats are acting up. They're not used to me sitting on the floor, and they're all kind of fighting over territory to check out what I'm doing here. So some uh, John Lewis of the uh, Modern Jazz Quartet playing uh, compositions by Gunther Schuller and Jim Hall, the guitarist, great guitarist. Early uh, Atlantic pressing. There's the vinyl. And uh, Art Farmer, the Art Farmer Quartet featuring, uh, like I said, Jim Hall, the guitarist. Another early Atlantic. And this one actually in the original inner sleeve, it looks like. I can get it out there, yeah. And another Atlantic. Some uh, Ray Charles, Ray Charles in person. This one a little beat up, seam splits and all, but I don't have any Ray Charles, so I'll give it a shot. 
Yeah, it's on the early, that old Atlantic label there. And a uh, stereo demonstration disc. This one from Fantasy Records. West Coast jazz label known for uh, Dave Brubeck, Cal Jader, uh, what's his name, Vincent Garaldi, the guy who did the Peanuts music. This one's pretty cool because it's a, uh, ah, it's a red vinyl. A lot of fancy stuff pressed on red vinyl back in the day. Uh, this one a little pricier, one of the pricier records I picked up, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful shape. Porgy and Bess, done by uh, Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong. Gatefold double LP on Verve. And some more Verve. Uh, another one, Ella Fitzgerald, sings the Rogers and Hart songbook. Another one that's just in beautiful shape. Some Ella Fitzgerald, uh, this one quite a bit rougher for a quarter. Sings a Gershwin Songbook, Volume 2, conducted by Nelson Riddle. More Verve, uh, Jimmy Geoffrey, uh, Piece for Clarinet and String Orchestra slash Mobiles. Uh, so I think it's kind of more of a classical orchestrated piece with uh, Jimmy Geoffrey doing the uh, clarinet solo. And... Uh, Again, someone's made a note where they bought it. I can't see what this says. Something about record sealed. Bought in 64, I think. 27 March 64. And let's see. Sound harsh. No, nothing called a clear melody runs through above. I like that. The Jimmy Geoffrey 3. Fusion on Verve. Demo copy, not for sale. The Amazing Jimmy Smith Trio on Metro Verve's uh, kind of budget line, I think. This is kind of nice. I always like these Jimmy Smith ones where it's, you know, the Verve stuff, a lot of times they got strings overdub backing them up and it gets kind of syrupy, but um, I like how it's real simple, just him and drums and bass or. Something like that. Uh, some more Brubeck on Columbia. Southern scene. This one still in the original shrink. And uh, it's kind of weird on Angel. Angel recordings, I think typically a uh, like classical music label. Probably because it's got Itzhak Perlman, the uh, violinist, and Andre Previn. Uh, pianist, uh, concert conductor there, uh, but uh, Andre Previn originally uh, played jazz with uh, some of these guys like Shelly Mann, but you also have Jim Hall, the guitarist, Red Mitchell on bass. I guess uh, with the story behind this, reading the liner, it's Itzhak Perlman wanted to do a jazz record, so he got together with his friend Andre Previn, the conductor. Who played jazz back in the day on the West Coast and uh, write some stuff, and then they gathered these these guys who were kind of the cream of the crop at the old school on the West Coast. And this is from sometime in the 80s, and they recorded a couple albums. I think this is the second one of the two. So it's a digital digital recording, pressed on vinyl. Uh, West Coast, more West Coast jazz, Bud Shank and Shorty Rogers. This is an 80s record. Um, I think I have a Jerry Mulligan. That's the California concert. So this might be like kind of an updated take on that. But it's on the contemporary label. Bud Shank, Shorty Rogers, George Cables. Promo copy. Uh, here's an old uh, back in the day original on contemporary. It's on a mono record, two LP set. Shelly Man and his men at the manhole. I don't know if that name would fly these days. The manhole. Uh, recorded live, an actual performance at the manhole in Hollywood, California. 
Double LP side again. It's got the original plastic inners. And uh, more West Coast Jazz, Barney Kessel. Barney Kessel Quartet working out. Another high fidelity contemporary. Contemporary uh, contemporary records, West Coast Jazz label. They did a really nice job recording their, their musicians. Has some really, really good early stereo recordings. Right up there with uh, Blue Notes RVG recordings, Rudy Van Gelder recordings. Another West Coast label, Bethlehem. This is a 1980s reissue. Is this what originally came out in the late 50s? I think mid to late 50s. Mel Torme. Of course, the Velvet Fog. Here he is, young. Uh, the Torme Touch. Apparently, reading the liner notes, he was kind of a bit of a handful back in the early days. And had a little bit of an ego, maybe. Finally got his act together and was taken seriously as the jazz singer. Uh, some great players on here. You can see Bud Shank, uh, Bob Cooper, Red Mitchell, Mel Lewis. But uh, this... Nah. Do the one-handed record pull here. Let's see if I can pull this off here. A little preview here of some Yusuf Latif. But there's the label on this reissue. Really weird. Never seen a never seen any series before. I've got a few of the older Bethlehem, so on CTI, Cree Taylor Incorporated, Yusef Latif, Auto Physio Psychic with Art Farmer. More familiar with Yusef's uh, older stuff. But nice CTI gatefold. Give that a shot. Joe Pass uh, is one of the Blue Note uh, reissue series here. Uh, Catch Me, I think it was an album that was originally on Pacific Jazz. And when they were all kind of gathered together under, uh, was it Liberty or one of the other record companies, they reissued some of the stuff. It's got one bonus track on here. Miles Davis, Sketches of Spain. This is a uh, kind of beat up jacket, but. An original 6i, you can see it's beat up, original 6i pressing on this one. Uh, more Miles Davis, jazz on the screen, Miles Davis, and then also Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Uh, yep, soundtrack music from famous French films on Fontana. I don't really know much about this record, or these recordings. I think I'd give that a shot. Take a look at the label on that one. Montana. And some classic uh, classic Chet Baker here on Riverside. Jackets kind of beat up. The seams are all splitting. Early Riverside stereo for $1.50. I couldn't pass it up. Chet back in his early days when he was looking all studly. And got him back with the heroin and went downhill, unfortunately. Great players on this one. Uh, Pepper Adams, Bill Evans, Kenny Burrell, uh, Paul Chambers on bass, Connie Kay, and Philly Joe Jones on drums. Quality stuff there. Let's see if I can get a, take a look at the label there. Really heavy, heavy vinyl on this one. The classic Riverside label on that. And then some more oddball stuff, some uh, DJ Crush, Japanese DJ electronic musician, Selections with a K. Uh, this is uh, stuff from his Me Light album, off of Moax Records. I've never really gotten into DJ Crush. Um, not so much like a turntablist, uh, scratching DJ. It's got some rappers on this one. Most stuff is the best known, I think. An old cream, uh, Disraeli Gears, looks like a US first pressing or early pressing on Atco. It's in pretty good shape. Maybe I'll give it a shot. Some old Jimmy Cliff, the harder they come. On, let's see, on Mango. Mango Rec. I figure I'd give it a shot. 
I don't normally collect reggae, but here, what the heck, I'll give it a shot. Uh, great record here. Double record set uh, with Laurie Anderson, John Giorno, and the old man William S. Burroughs. Uh, you're the guy I want to share my money with. Just shot the uh, gatefold interior there. That's pretty cool. A little goofing around for the photo session. Uh, I'm guessing this stuff was recorded about 1981, it looks like. On Giorno Poetry Systems. I actually have another copy of this, but it's in uh, it's in pretty good shape, but the edges are all kind of frayed. So this is a nice, clean copy of that. Uh, I've got two copies of this one already, but this is a great record. Ja Wobble, the guy who played bass originally in Public Image Limited. Um, the Edge from U2. Holger Zhukai from Can. Snake Charmer. This is a little mini LP, EP type thing. Uh, early 80s, kind of dance music, funky. Um, you also got uh, the other guy, one of the other guys from Can, the drummer. Believe it's Sight. Uh, let's see. I think it's mixed by Francois Kevorkian. He did a lot of the New York club mixes back in the early 80s. Really good stuff. Fun, funky, danceable. Great record. And some old Moog records. Everything you always wanted to hear on the Moog, but were afraid to ask for. Uh, don't really know a whole lot about this, but I figure it's worth a shot. Another one they made a note when they bought it in 74. Uh, this is the classic switched on Bach, uh, Walter Carlos. And the original shrink. I guess this is the second pressing. I think the first pressing, the, the guy was sitting down on the original. And then the second pressing, he's standing up. Uh, let's see where this one came from. Cooper, Cooper Radio, St. Pete, St. Petersburg, Florida. That must be 1968. Uh, the Well-Tempered Synthesizer from Walter Carlos. Uh, this one's still and sealed in the shrink wrap, although, again, he cut out the, the corner to right where he bought it. Something, something in Gainesville, Florida, 1972. But sealed up in the shrink wrap. Uh, I know someone I might give this to. I think likes this kind of stuff. And a couple other ones on the National Geographic label. This is Wilderness Trail. And uh, let's see this one. There's the inside the gatefold. It's got a booklet in one, one side and the record in the other. And then the Music of Spain, Volume 1, Andalusia. And take a quick look at this one. This one's actually got the booklet inside the gatefold. Notes about the country, things like that. Some nice pictures. Again, I know someone I might give this to who's been collecting those. And uh, another Moog record, or so I thought. Um, this one looked pretty cool. I'd never heard of it. The Electric Symphony. Um, Popped it on the turntable, I was listening to it, and it sounded like, wow, amazing. I didn't know they could get such, uh, such true symphonic sounds out of a Moog synthesizer. Um, and then as I listened to it, I heard some people singing, and I thought, what? I looked at the label, well, it's, it's the same record label, it's like a Christian religious music label, and this is not the right record. Same record label, but this is not the electric symphony on the Moog synthesizer, so. Wah wah. Try again. So that was my haul of uh, records there. Um, quite a stack. Kind of went crazy, but like I said, you know, this thing's a. I don't know. It's a cool opportunity to pick up a bunch of records you wouldn't normally get. And it's all for a good cause, so. Thanks for watching. See you next time.